art should be free. Which sounds like such an exhilarating, almost romantic statement until you realize that it has no substance at all. As long as there have been people who make things of value, there have been attempts to get the things they make at a discount or worse. Now, whether the internet made things worse by providing people with more things that are free or seemingly free, or it just gave people who have this perspective a bigger platform, if you have a skill or something to offer, chances are you don't have to go very far to find someone who will take it off your hands for you. One of my favorite Twitter accounts to hate, I've actually unfollowed and followed it multiple times just because of the kind of anxiety and angst that it can generate, is called Forexposure underscore TXT. It's run by Ryan Estrada, and it documents and quotes the attempts and mental gymnastics that people go through trying to justify why the artist that they're looking for work from shouldn't get paid. The account name comes from the common currency extended to artists in this situation. You won't get money, but you'll get exposure, you know, attention to your work. In some of the quotes, people get angry. In others, they get manipulative. And in almost all of them, there's this sense of entitlement. See, the issue here isn't when someone asks for something, realizes they can't afford it, and moves on. It's the complaining, bargaining, and straight-up harassment that can come after they won't take no for an answer. A lot of times in the For Exposure TXT posts, the artist is actually asking a criminally low amount for their work. I almost get more upset with the artists in these situations. And yet the $5 asking price should really be more like $250 in the eyes of the commissioner. People try to rip each other off all the time, but there are additional stigmas that surround art and creative professions, the amount of value that it provides and whether or not they should get paid. So I thought I'd take some time to tackle some of the myths surrounding, and I can't believe I have to say this, doing work and getting paid for it, but also helping you to be wary if you're in a similar situation. Let's start with art should be free. This one isn't really even that convincing. It's just asserting a certain amount of pathos and swapping the word art into a statement like birds should be free. This idea is born of the thought that art as in a creative expression, should be untethered from a company or a corporate viewpoint or the bias of an influencing party, and instead should be the pure, unadulterated mind stream flow of the peasants or something. In this case, anyone who accepts money in exchange for their work is labeled a sellout. And boy, if ever there was a more crab bucket mentality phrase that punishes and gets jealous of people for succeeding, it's the term sellout. People use the term sellout for everything, and I get it. A band that you really like rested on their laurels, they phoned in a few albums and got super into merchandising. But calling someone a sellout is this conflation of like culture and counterculture into something that, honestly, I'm not super interested in understanding, but ultimately it feels lazy and oozing with resentment. It feels just like anger for someone being compensated for their effort. Maybe when someone says art should be free, they mean that art is too pure and good to be shackled to the capitalist society that we live in. And maybe you have a point, but back in the real world, people receive money in exchange for their work to clothe themselves, feed themselves, and have shelter. Side note, and this is a bit of a recurring theme, the person who says things like this is probably just trying to justify why they should get something for free. They aren't really interested in philosophizing and changing up the framework. They just feel entitled. Something that we just need to inherently understand is the fact that art and design have valuable paid roles in the world around us. You may have heard things like an artist can't make money, and that isn't necessarily true. Granted, your skills have to be in a place where they are good enough, and that isn't necessarily easy. And it's a relatively competitive industry, at least compared to something like carpenters, until you realize, after you spend any time with carpenters, that Bob Kale is going around town underbidding on jobs to undercut Giordano and Sons, and then Bob Kale does such a shoddy job on the work that those clients have to go and ask Giordano and Sons to do the job, which they could have just done right in the first place and saved themselves a lot of money, you know? And that tangent brings me to what is really a main point behind all of this, which is that art and design are trades, the same as a carpenter or a plumber or electrician. It takes time to perfect and hone your craft, you provide a valuable service, and then people pay you for it. 
The idea that we have to fight against is that of the drugged out artist in a loft somewhere throwing himself at canvases and generally draining society. And some people genuinely don't understand the work that artists do, while others maybe purposefully misconstrue the work in order to prey on artists for free work. Now, if someone is ignorant, perhaps try nicely to help them to understand. But if they don't, try not to waste your energy or allow their lesser opinion of what you do to hold any power over you. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is working on spec. Basically, any time that someone does work before getting paid or where getting paid for the work isn't really a guarantee at all. Now, the website nospec.com and the video that they created does a really thorough job of explaining this, so I won't go super in-depth here. I don't have $1.75 in my budget right now just to oh. try one coffee willy-nilly to see okay. if I like it or not. That's why I would like a spec one. But working on spec comes in a lot of different packages. Sometimes it's design contests, which are the worst. Uh, sometimes it's someone saying, if you do this thing for free, maybe I'll like it, and if I do, then I'll pay you. Or they say, if you do this first thing for free, later on down the line, maybe I'll pay you for the next thing. Just, no, nope, no. If you want, look at the artist's portfolio to see what they're capable of and see if it's what you would be interested in. If you're worried about money, then maybe put it in escrow. And if you have such a large problem with trust, maybe reevaluate the relationship. A lot of times trust is again used as sort of a tactic of, I don't really trust you, so you have to you know, meet me more than halfway, right? And again, it's sort of a predatory tactic. Now, my personal policy is to get at least 25 to 50% payment up front, if not 100%, and that's after signing a contract. Now, to some people that may seem extreme, but let me tell you a story. Now, a couple of years ago, a younger Brooks and his wife took on a project for a very successful and kind of famous character designer and comic artist. Now, back then, we were doing a lot of sign work. So my work wasn't necessarily contributing art, but it was turning their art into sign work. Now, I was so excited to work with this art hero of mine that we took on this almost impossible task of creating, I think, upwards of 30 double-sided signs with his work on them in less than a week in order to get him to him in time for a Comic-Con that he was attending. So we worked 21 hour days this whole week. We paid for all the materials to make the signs. We paid another company to do some printing for them as well. We paid all of that ourselves up front. We got them done in time and overnighted them uh, across the country. It was, um, I think, a, at least $100 overnight shipping to get them to him. We even included gifts for him and his family in the package. I think very conservative estimates for the cost of that project was at least $4,000. And you may have noticed already, but I didn't get any payment up front. I was so excited to work with this other artist, and I thought in the back of my head, artists don't rip other artists off. They understand the struggle. I never saw a dollar from him. That set us back, that broke couple a couple years ago, it set us back for months. It did tangible damage to my family. So my policy is to always get some payment up front. Now you know why. Working on spec is by and large a predatory practice. Don't allow the person who tries to get spec work from you to devalue your industry or to devalue you. One more red flag or myth has to do with any kind of language that uh, makes you feel beholden to a client's budgetary restrictions. Uh, in other words, anytime someone says, you know, we only have this much money set aside for this and makes it feel like that is relevant to you or pressures you into feeling like you still have to meet um, their budget. It's one thing if they say, realistically, here's our budget and you can kind of take it or leave it, uh, negotiate with them, leave it on the table if, if need be. Uh, but it's another where it's something that I call like belt tightening rhetoric, where they're just like trying to create a huddle and they're saying, hey, listen, times are tight, but we can all pull together and work through this. Um, you can walk away from that huddle mostly because it doesn't exist. Our budget for design is small because there's more important things that cost money. Well, that's not really my problem, and it feels like maybe more of a misevaluation on your part of what things are important and how much things cost. 
I'm only 12 and I don't have a job. Well, I feel for you, hypothetical kid, but I don't have the same circumstances as you. I'm 26 and taking care of an ill wife and have rent to pay and no time at all, so respectfully, no. How dare you charge me more than 12 cents for this? It was my grandma's dying wish to have this purple and blue fox commissioned by my favorite artist. Your grandmother sounds like a wonderful person, but it's gonna be a no from me, dog. Are you really charging that much? It should only take 10 minutes. I could do this if I wanted to. Art should be fun. A lot of really reductive things to unpack there. I think if you could do this yourself, you wouldn't be asking me. And art is fun, but it's also a job. You can find creative fulfillment and enjoyment in your work, but also be paid for it. It's not a factor for a carpenter who enjoys their work or feels fulfilled by it. Same as even someone who makes sandwiches at Subway. Art is fun, but also it takes work and time and energy, and creating something takes something from you. As for something only taking 10 minutes, even if it really did only take 10 minutes to do, uh, evaluating something only for the amount of time it took to do and not for the time and effort that that person took to build up their skills is only a partial evaluation. It's pretty well established that we, or hopefully an insurance company, is paying for a doctor's time, not just for the 30 minutes that we saw them, but also for the years of medical school that they went through, the rent of the office that they're in, the equipment that they use, and even down to the air conditioning that you feel while you're visiting them. I'm sure I speak for a lot of working artists when I say that we aren't trying to be greedy. Uh, personally, I'm not interested in extravagant wealth or fame. The ideal working situation to me is not unlike that of a carpenter or a contractor, a skilled tradesman who takes pride in his work and is paid fairly for what he does. We just have a few more stigmas to break through than your average tradesman. Those are a lot of common things that come up, but I do want to talk about times where you could work for free. Now that might sound surprising given all I just said, but that'll have to wait for a video next week. All in all, just be wary of predatory practices. Know your own worth. The client is not doing you a favor by asking you to do work for them, especially for free. Keep your head up, stay professional, and make great stuff. Now I make these videos optionally because I want to. No one other than me is forcing me to make them. But if they've helped you and you'd like to compensate me for my time and energy and rent and stuff like that, you can support this channel over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen and get a ton of things in return, like a personalized video critique of your work that helps you to level up your art, storytelling, and design skills. That's at the Novice Bard tier. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Twitch, the name is the same on all of them. It's at bageldenizen. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.